As you know, Pluto is a long, long, long way away. And so we've asked a friend, a planetary friend, Jupiter, to help us out. Jupiter is our most massive planet in the solar system. And by flying very close, we expect to get a kick and have it fling us outward towards Pluto. The Jupiter system's mass is going to accelerate our spacecraft tremendously. It's going to give us almost 9,000 miles per hour of speed boost. That's half the speed of the space shuttle. We get it for free by hitting the Jupiter aim point. It's going to shave three years off of our trajectory as a result. In preparation for the Jupiter encounter, the mission operations team is running um, many simulations of every observation to make sure that the flight software is processing all the commands and that the guidance and control system is targeting the spacecraft uh, to the proper celestial bodies as expected. Uh, and this is all in order to maximize the Jupiter science and to also make sure that the spacecraft uh, health and safety is maintained. Well, what we're doing is running a, a simulation of Jupiter observations that are going to take place on closest approach day. And we're getting ready to start the uh, sequence for closest approach. And the first event we're doing is we're going to Europa. So what we're going to do is we're going to slew um, off of the high gain antenna off of the Earth and start to put the uh, imagers on the various moons of Jupiter and on uh, Jupiter itself. It's very scary to build a spacecraft and then launch it and not get any data for nine years. And so it's really key to test out the instruments before we get there. And we've designed this particular flyby to be a stress test on our spacecraft, to work out the kinks so that at Pluto, we don't learn a thing about our spacecraft. We've worked out those kinks at Jupiter. The last few months, as we've been slowly turning on instruments, opening doors, essentially removing the lens cap, on our various cameras and uh, taking you know, simple pictures of star fields to get an idea of our focus and our sensitivity have been a very rapid learning process for all of us. And we don't have very much time to do that. The Jupiter encounter is only just over a year after launch because we're going so incredibly fast with the spacecraft. So we're having to learn these things very fast. Definitely not any boredom. <laughs> it's been like sprinting for a whole year. We're ready for hibernation, I think, to slow down a little bit. So it's been fun, we've been kept busy. You can always rehearse in empty space, but that's never quite the same as actually trying to target real objects and solve real problems. The GNC is about to conduct a color image of the moon of Io using the Ralph instrument. Copy that. Will it be Lisa or Inca? It's not so much that it, it practices the spacecraft, because the spacecraft can practice perfectly fine in empty space, it's that it practices the team you have to be so careful with the spacecraft. It's so precious to us, we can't turn too fast because it uses too much fuel and we have to conserve our fuel for Pluto and the Kuiper Belt. This will be a wonderful dress rehearsal for the whole process of putting together a complicated sequence. And we only get to do it once at Pluto, so having this practice at Jupiter will be very valuable for that. Go ahead, GNC. This occultation will be the last event prior to closest approach. You want to take on the challenge and you want to make it work even if it's, you know, long days and, and long hours and trying to figure out how to fit 20,000 commands and to not enough macro space. It's the challenge and then the success and the reward when it does work. That was easy. We like to think that everything is going to go smoothly and when it does, and most of the time it does, that is our way of telling the world. So it's more intense than by several orders of magnitude than anything we've done as far as memory usage, uh, which translates to number of commands. It's, it's more intense actually than our Pluto simulations we did pre-launch. Pre by the time we go through enough of these simulations, we hope that everything on the real spacecraft is fairly smooth and easy. That's why we do them sim after sim after sim. The current distance from Jupiter is 2.3 million kilometers. Copy that. We're at closest approach, and here goes our slew. We've uh, spent a lot of time getting this mission ready, and we spent uh, this last year checking everything out, and now we're wanting to look at the data that comes down. We're just as excited as the scientists are on the engineering side. And we are right on course. We're arriving on the 28th of February closest approach to Jupiter. We will be 
simultaneously doing science and learning about the spacecraft and learning even better how to fly by it. Um, by the time we, we have Jupiter in our rearview mirror, I think we'll have a, a really great understanding of how this, this machine works and how we work together on it. And we'll be just making sure we remember all that for the next eight years until we get to Pluto.